What's up, guys? Welcome back to Apocalypse Movies and the Movie Watching Challenge, our brand new show here on Apocalypse, where we're going to be challenging each other to watch brand new movies that we've never seen before, whether they're just a few years old or decades old. Um, so this is episode number three. Uh, I am your host, Jake Berlin, and I got uh, Jacob Bartley and Brian Avalicino here with me. Um, and so last episode, uh, I challenged Jacob to watch The Last Starfighter, um, the 1984 classic space adventure uh, from Nick Castle. And then uh, Brian is here because he's not only going to give his thoughts on The Last Starfighter after we have talked about it a little bit, but he is being challenged by Jacob. Bum, and bum, so bum. Um, <laughs> that'll be the second portion of the show. But uh, before we get to that and what movie he'll be challenging him with, we're going to get to The Last Starfighter and, and what Jacob has thought about it. He, get, he was, had a week to watch it, a little homework assignment, and he has come today prepared to talk about it. Going to give a little mini review. We'll talk about it a little bit. So uh, without further ado, man, what did you think of The Last Starfighter? So I watched it a couple days ago. I think I watched it on Saturday, actually. And I was... You and Keith seemed really excited about it. So mm -hmm. I was like, there has to be a reason why they like it so yeah. much. And I, I, I watched it, and I enjoyed it. Like, it wasn't... It didn't blow me away. Yeah. I didn't yeah. love it. And maybe there's a... You guys might have watched it when you were younger. So maybe there's... I only watched it about four or five years ago. Oh, really? Ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was wondering, like, uh, you know, what the appeal was. But no, I do like it. Like, there's some really good things in there. Just the mythology and everything is really cool with the with the arcade game mm -hmm. and how they recruit yeah. star fighters and everything like that. And I felt like and Did I, we hype it up too much? It's maybe a little bit, okay. maybe. Okay. But the thing is I gotta keep in mind it's an eighties film. Yes. And Coming the technology's after not and... great unless you're George Lucas. <laughs> yeah. Um and the there's like a cheesiness factor to this movie for sure. And it's like like I just kept thinking the whole time that it came after Star Wars and they yeah. like if you're comparing the quality of Star Wars oh, like it's just so bad. on like a so bad just on visual effects mm -hmm. and like Star Wars even the first one like it's taken very seriously and there's like there's not any like joking or cheesiness to it this one has total cliche oh it's the complete opposite and I think yeah, they yeah. might have went for that in a way um, but but overall I did like I really liked the main character mm -hmm. I liked the thing where they sent a replacement for him yeah. on Earth. That yeah. was a really cool t angle that they went with that. That presented some cool things with his girlfriend and all that stuff. And then what ended up happening with him I, I know. was actually pretty cool. I know. That that took a turn. At first I was like, this is kind of dumb. But then what he does at near the end is mm -hmm. pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then I really liked the girlfriend character too. And I love the guy. I forget his name. But the guy who recruits him. He has a weird, like an alien. Oh name. yeah, yeah. I, I haven't it's seen it. It's a car or some, yeah, something some like name. with an yes. S. Yes. Um, that their relationship was cool. Him and the main characters, and then um, yeah, I did, and I it really is the last Starfighter. Like what happens because I was just I was curious why it's called the last Starfighter, and because when he shows up to the space, there's colony, so many of them. There's like twenty of them mm -hmm. at least, and I'm like, oh cool, like that's that's odd. But then you see what happens, <laughs> yeah. and he literally is the last starfighter, and he kind of takes on this whole uh, bad army on his own, which was pretty cool. But for me, it was just, you know, the, really, the 80s cheese, and the thing is, like, I cannot believe how bad the special effects are. Like, it <laughs> looks like a video game. And I don't know oh, if they yeah, did that on looks, purpose. Yeah, did, it's... I, maybe I'm not, they did I'm that not on sure. purpose. We have to do some research, but... It's like a Star... The Starfighter arcade game. Definitely... It's definitely, like, like it's 100 so times worse how Star, Star Wars, Wars came out first, yeah. and it looks like... It came out... It came out seven years before Exactly. This. So, Star Wars looks decent today. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So... It's crazy how bad it looks, um, but I had to put that aside. I wasn't judging the movie based on that. Uh, I was judging it based on its just just eighties vibe and how they were how the sci fi element and all that stuff. And then his him and the alien too, the one that he ends up you know fighting the mm -hmm. army against with mm -hmm. at the end. I really need to remember names on this, but their their names are so <laughs> random. I just yeah. remember Alex is the main character's name. Um, so yes, I really did enjoy it. It's a very enjoyable eighties movie. It's not going to be something I beloved for the rest of my life. Probably not, but I did enjoy it a lot. So last on our last episode, uh, I claim that this is one of the few movies that, without a doubt, deserves some kind of remake. Reboot. Yeah, we do talked you, about that. Do you 100% agree with me, or are you on the other side of this one? Um, I do. I do think that this mythology and 
it lends itself very well to a remake today. The only thing that makes me hesitate on that is that it's going to be really expensive to make. Yes. And the thing is you have to go – you're going to have to spend at least $150 million to make yeah. this movie. Yeah. And I don't know how well it's going to do at the box office. Very so true. it really just depends. If you can, you can totally do – a Guardians of the Galaxy type vibe with this movie. I would love to see that with, and I guarantee you if they did make it, it would be a VR thing, how mm-hmm. some kid is playing VR and it finds out it's you that know, would be really a, very a cool twist. thing. Very cool and twist. It, yeah, so I think that's the way it would go and it would be set in modern day. Yes. And the thing, what I did appreciate about appreciate about this movie is, um, you know, when like in Star Wars, right, he's on Tatooine, a world that we don't know, uh, some some fictional world. I love that the the last starfighter is based like he's from Earth. Yes, yeah, and yeah. that's the really cool thing because it's like what happens when these <laughs> Earthlings realize that there's um, other beings. Yeah, exactly. Out there. And it's so funny to me because in most sci-fi movies like this, they have to keep it a secret that aliens exist and stuff like that. They don't care in this movie. <laughs> no. they, they show up in the whole neighborhood. And speaking of that, one of the funniest parts to me is when he's about to be, break the record at the near the, the beginning arcade. of the movie, yeah. and the whole trailer. Park oh, they're all comes behind him. It's like it. a crowd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the same thing at the end when they're all watching it. But it took me a while to realize that that was a trailer park. Like I was like, oh, that makes sense because they're like they're all everybody knows each other and things like that. And I will say. I just want to say, Catherine Mary Stewart, the girl who plays Maggie, is gorgeous. <laughs> and I know she's older now, but in this movie, I was like, oh my goodness. If I was like a teenager back in this time, I would have had a Your huge crush, crush on that actress. She fair. is gorgeous. That's fair. But I did enjoy it. Honestly, I recommend it if you haven't seen it. It's definitely a little fun movie. It's not too long. It's like less than two hours yeah, long. Yeah, it's very. It's and definitely it's just, less, yeah. It's fun, little fun movie to go and watch. So, Brian, you hear us talking about this man. You hear Jacob's uh, little mini review of this. Uh, is it something that seems interesting to you? Or are you kind of... My interest is peaked. To me, from what I've heard, it sounds like Ender's Game had a baby with uh, Ready Player One mixed with... I don't even know at this point. Probably a little bit of Star Wars. Yeah, a little bit of Star I would Wars. say that for sure. And it's a good, That's a good combination. Yeah, I mean, it's not not a bad one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my interest is kind of peaked. All right. All right. Definitely. Fair enough. Well, that's uh, that's Jacob's review of The Last Starfighter. I'm glad that you liked it um, because Keith and I were both very pumped that we got to cha- – or I got to challenge you with yeah. this one. Um, so we're going to move on from The Last Starfighter and move on to the next portion of the show where Jacob gets to challenge someone new for this week um, because I challenge him. He doesn't get to choose me. So it was either Keith or Brian, and he chose Brian. And so I'm going to leave the floor to him. I'm the easy target. Uh, well, I mean, we're all kind of easy targets when it comes to this thing. Mm, um, not you. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to leave the floor to Jacob, and he's going to kind of challenge uh, Brian and talk about the movie that he wants to uh, use. Okay, so I was going to challenge Brian challenge Brian to 16 Candles, but I found out that oh, he's no. seen it. Um, I kind of a roundabout way found out. I asked him, what John Hughes movies have you seen? And I guess 16 Candles is the only one he's seen. Yeah, so um, I have another movie in mind, that a movie that I hadn't seen for the longest time, and I watched it, and I instantly fell in love with it, and I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I haven't seen this movie. And now it's one of my favorite movies ever. And... I don't know if you've seen it or not, honestly. If you have, we're going to have to <laughs> figure something else out. But I'm going to challenge you to watch The Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind starring Jim Carrey. And I'm I've heard sure you've heard of this movie. Um, when it came out, it was actually it was pretty popular when it first came out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I back then I was in high school or I was really young and I just didn't pique my interest. But when I started getting into film more... And I watched this movie. This movie is like, when you're watching it, it's just brutal to watch. Isn't it Not, his first serious movie? One of them. He did Truman yeah. Show before this. I yeah, think. he did. He did but Truman Show this. had some comedicness yeah. to it. But this movie's straight serious. Um, and I love Jim Carrey as an actor. He's one of my favorites ever. So, And this movie um, really shows that he can act dramatically. And I just think it's such an interesting movie. It's crazy. And it's actually really heartbreaking. So I just, oh, great. I really want to... And it it's tragic. I really want to hear your perspective on this movie. Hmm. I've I've never seen this movie, oh. and so I'll probably be watching it with you. Um, yeah, you and I've well. I've heard uh, that the score is absolutely it's, the score incredible. is great. And so I, great. I'm excited that you've been challenged for it because now I get to watch it. Oh, and it also star, <laughs> co-stars Kate Winslet, who I love. Kate yes, Winslet. Oh, I love her, and she's great in it as well. Oh man! So you excited or what? Yeah, I've, I've <laughs> definitely heard of this movie. Uh, 
what 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 time period are we? Early uh, 90s? early two thousand. Early two thousand. Yeah, yeah. About fifteen years ago. Early two yeah. thousand. Yeah. I, like, I think vague... like I want to say two thousand five. Because I like want to say two thousand five. Yeah. Remember like commercials for it. And stuff like 2004. that. 2004. Okay, I was close. Yes. Yeah. So I'm pretty young at that age. Probably about what, 15, around 15. So yeah, I rem- I remember the commercials for it. I remember being big on Jim Carrey and then seeing yeah. advertisements for it and being exactly. like, that's not Jim Carrey. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm down. I'm actually glad that you, because uh, you and I are so polar opposites on movies when it comes to movies yeah, yeah he yeah brian's list of movies that he's watched is like zero <laughs> and, and mine that i've watched is, is pretty endless but uh yeah it gives me a chance to watch and i've wanted to watch it for a very long yeah, time yeah i mean i was gonna challenge somebody to it i knew back when we first started the show that you hadn't seen it mm-hmm. before but mm-hmm. i wasn't sure since then yeah so i was gonna challenge somebody to it and once i got the first chance and i was hoping brian hadn't seen it so there you go Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, excited because, and I, I like that you use this one because typically it's not a movie he would turn on by himself. Exactly. That's the whole point uh, of this. Is it a slow movie? Uh, I, I would say so, yeah. But it's a drama. It's, it's a, drama, a drama, though. So it's a like, drama. I'm fine with drama. And so it, it definitely has the slow parts, but they, he tends to shy away from. Not slower movies, just the movies that have a different kind of pace to it. Like slower drama films. You're not yeah, going to go and back so and watch them. It's something that he won't he over turn 10 on by himself ago, yeah. or like look on the TV and be like, oh, I want to watch that. So it's the perfect choice for th- – and this is exactly why we did this <laughs> exactly, show. Exactly. Exactly yeah. why we because did this Because I'm show. not going to pick like something you know in his – Wheelhouse. In his wheelhouse, yeah. you know, something that I, he'll probably watch on his own either way. Mm-hmm. I wanted to choose mm-hmm. something like make him sit down and watch it. And I, like I said, I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on this. It's probably the most excited I'm going to be going into a return episode <laughs> yeah. for the movie watching yeah. challenge or make him watch it. Whatever. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, awesome. Well, Jacob is challenging Brian to uh, Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. And he has one week to watch it. So he's got a little homework assignment. Um, and do you know if it's on any kind of... Video on demand. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I imagine it it's used somewhere. to be on somewhere. Amazon Prime. If not, then we'll find it on Black Friday because Black Friday is this weekend, and maybe we'll buy it for like five bucks or something. So, uh, which shouldn't be a problem uh, in my mind anyway. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll come back next week for the episode four of the movie watching challenge, and um, it will consist of both Jacob and Brian. Whether or not it'll be Keith or I. Uh, Brian's gonna have the opportunity to challenge one of us. Yes. Um, oh, and so, that's why Brian wanted to go. That's so he yeah, can challenge exactly, somebody. Yeah, exactly. He's probably got some like white chick style nope. movie or something that he's gonna nope. challenge with us. Just so you know, Brian, you can't challenge a person who challenged you. Yep. So, I've already, I've um, already <laughs> had my movie in my person. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough. And so uh, come back next week for episode four, where you'll hear uh, Brian's thoughts on Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, um, as well as Jacob's uh, reaction to Brian's thoughts, and then where Brian will go with. Uh, uh, challenging someone from there oh, on out. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for joining us on episode three of the Muji Watching Movie Watching Challenge. Uh, Jacob and Brian as well. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, check us out on ApocalypseMovies.com, this YouTube channel uh, for movie reviews, trailer reactions, the Padawan podcast, uh, and much more. A lot of movies are starting to come out, so we're gonna have a lot of stuff in the next couple months or so, uh, especially with Oscar season around the corner and the year ending. And so, uh, make sure you hit that like button, share. Comment, head down there, leave some thoughts on both The Last Starfighter and uh, non-spoiler thoughts on Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Um, And make sure you come back next week for episode four. And again, thank you for joining us on the Movie Watching Challenge. (laughs) 